So we did this verse, uh, it's been some time ago now, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a, there are two words that would fit here. One of them is D-E-B and one of them is D-E-P. Based. Debased mind to do what? Not, not to be done. The other word is depraved. Depraved and debased work. Both of them were there. They were filled, filled with all manner of Jesus. unrighteousness. Indeed. No, that's later. The same Indeed. as a what? Indeed. Evil, yeah. Covetousness. Covetousness. Malice. Malice. They're full of envy, murder, strife. This is when you mislead people, telling them lies, deceit, maliciousness, uh, maliciousness, and they are gossips. Now, the next verse is full of more sin like this, but we're going to, because it takes so long, I'm going to skip, go back to Psalms 100. I think some of you will know this verse. There's two verses, actually. Make a what? Joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with Singing, so good. Yeah, that's a wonderful psalm. Let me tell you something about this psalm. You remember, I'm going to be careful. I'll take too much time. I get wound up. But David brought the tabernacle and brought the ark into Jerusalem at the city of David, Mount Zion, and he built a tabernacle for it. And he invited people from all nations. People could come from everywhere and praise the Lord. And he'd tell them about the true God. And God intended for Israel to do that. But Israel didn't do that very well. They, were, they, weren't, they wanted to keep God to themselves. They thought these other people are just awful, wicked, evil people. And they were awful, evil, wicked people. But they didn't want to tell them about God. God wanted Israel to be his instrument to tell the world. David did that. And so he had the ark out there where everybody could see it. And he invited them to come and make a joyful noise to the Lord, all your lands. That's what he means by all your lands. And, and, and guys, this is so important. You've probably heard people say, if you can't sing, Make a joyful noise, right? There's, yeah, yeah. I clap your hands is a way to do that. Uh, when I'm listening to a good sermon, you will hear me say yes, or you'll hear me say amen, yes. or I, you'll hear me say thank you, Lord, or something like that. I'm making a joyful noise because I love what the preacher's saying. You see what I'm saying? I am a certain little thing. So, Steve Burdick, and every time they stand up, clap. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well. Now, and, and, and when we're singing, listen, some of us have okay voices. That would be me. Some of us have incredibly wonderful voices. That would be like my wife. Some of us have lousy voices. We can't carry a tune. You know, there are people like that. Do you know Billy Graham? Well, the, the greatest preacher of the 20th century was Billy Graham. Preached a, I, I was one of the altar counselors when he preached in Nayland Stadium in 1970 or something like that. No, yeah, I really was. And, and, uh, and and there were a hundred thousand people in Nayland State, and that was way before it would hold a hundred thousand. But they put them down on the on the football field. It was it was. And listen, I heard a guy talking about Billy Graham one time. Billy Graham loved the Lord. He said, "I stood next to Billy Graham in a crusade when it was time to sing. Billy Graham sang with all the gusto he had, but he couldn't carry a tune. He had a heart. He said he didn't have his, he had a monotone. He couldn't hear music, but he sang anyway. He just made a joyful noise. You know, he, he just was determined to praise it. Let me tell you what happens to you. Satan will steal worship from you because he will, he will cause you to think, oh my, I don't want people laughing at me. They're going to think I'm trying to show off. They're going to think, they're going to think I'm, they're going to make fun of me. Uh, they're, they're not going to like my voice. And, and Satan just wants you to get quiet. He works on me that way. When I'm in the choir and I'm worshiping and I feel like, Oh, man, this is awesome. And I want to raise my hands. Satan will say, they're just going to think you're showing off. You need to be trying, they're going to think you're trying to get attention. Here. <laughs> I've got to say, Satan, get out of here. I'm worshiping God, focusing on him. We used to sing a song. And one of the verses said, says, so forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. And that's, that's, that was a verse. That was a chorus. And, and, and it's something I try to work on. I don't want to think about me. I don't want to think. I don't worry. I don't care. People think I'm trying to show off, or people think I look dorky, or people think I look dumb. People think I'm an idiot. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to worship God. And so that's what David's getting at here. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Listen, there are times when you'll be serving the Lord, and it'll be heavy. It'll be hard. It'll be difficult. And you'll feel like, man, I'm not sure this is working. But you need to keep that joy. Just keep serving him with joy. Come before his presence with singing. We most of us start our worship services with lots of singing, but so it goes back in, ties back into this. So 
So when we sing, I would encourage you to sing. I know how painful it is if you feel like I can't sing very well and people are going to make fun of me. I know. But I want to encourage you to work really hard to get past it. Sing out loud when you're by yourself and uh, and gradually get to where you can sing out loud in front of other people and just worship the Lord. All right, let's memorize it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with singing. Great passage. Like a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Very good, very good. All right, anything else you need to say? Well, I don't want to get into a long conversation, but before we pray, yes. Okay, we will know. You're unstable? Bless your heart. Okay, we'll pray for you. I know it's hard for you to control your talking, isn't it? We'll pray for that too. That's not it. There's another instability there. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay, that's a good prayer. Okay, that's a really good prayer. Okay, that's a good prayer. All right, yes, sir. While you're thinking, Olivia, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll pray for that too. Okay, Thomas. I want to pray for somebody named Morgan. He goes to our church. He has bleeding in his stomach. He's mm. lost right now. Another um, young woman, her name is Emily Ross. He has twin to twin kids. He said he's for one baby, kidney, one nurse, and the other. You say kidney? No, twin to twin transfusion. One she, baby. Oh, one, one baby. Kidney. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so. Okay, I see. Okay. And then, mm. Okay. Okay. So these babies are still in her womb? Okay. Okay. Got you. Okay. All right. You ready to pray? Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the scripture that we looked at today. Help us to remember this. Help us to make a joyful noise to you, Lord, and help us not to worry about what other people may think or say. But Lord, we want to be real. We don't want to be showing off. We don't want to be acting silly, but we want to worship you well. So please help us to worship you well with our voices and singing and maybe shouting at times and clapping our hands or whatever, Lord, to, in your honor for your glory. So thank you for giving us this verse. And Lord, uh, you know the prayer requests that have been made. I pray for Noah. I pray for his family. I pray for Thomas and his family and their dads and the farms and all that's going on there. Lord, be merciful to them. And these two special requests that, uh, that uh, Thomas mentioned, Lord, these are people who need your healing power, Lord, and they need wisdom. The doctors need skill as they do this, these procedures, and, and, and Lord, I pray for these people that you take care of them, and, and if possible, if it can be your will, I know it's possible, if it can be your will that you would heal them and touch them and bring them through this and, and, and get glory through that. But in, in, in every case, Lord, we pray that you'd help them realize you are God and you know what you're doing and you have, you're a God of great wisdom. So help them to look to you for strength and grace and mercy and help and healing, and we'll give you praise for what you do. Lord, I pray for Olivia as she uh, gets ready for another play. I pray that would go well. And it would be something that would really glorify you and that she would have a lot of fun and, and joy in it at the same time that she's glorifying and honoring you. Now, Lord, we pray for Bella. You know what's going on in her heart and mind. I lift her to you and ask you to give her mercy and what she needs to, to take care of her, to make good decisions, and, uh, and to uh, be the kind of young girl you want her to be. So please be merciful to her. Did I miss anything? Yes, Lord, I pray for Will. Pray that you will not get hurt playing ball. Pray you have him to have fun and help him to do it for your glory, Lord. Even when we're playing ball, we can do that for your glory. So please use him. Anything else? Yes, yes, yes. Pray for Olivia's cousin as she flies back to California. Give her a safe and good trip and help her when she gets there to remember you're with her there and to be able to make good decisions and glorify you there. Anything else? Hmm? That's it. Thank you, Father, for these kids. Help them to concentrate well and learn well today as they focus on math. Help them to, to be teachable and to work really hard to get these things learned so that when the test comes around, they'll do well. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, 
Okay. Now let's see. Olivia, was it your mom that kept texting me about this lesson? Do you know? I'm not sure who it was. You got it straightened out, figured out? Because there seemed to be a lot of confusion because it was all up there. No, we didn't finish everything, but we finished. We did a lot of it. We did. But we, like, yeah, we did the donuts thing and the charts and the graphs and that sort of stuff. And she sent, she couldn't find it or something. I don't know what was going on there. Anyway, we're good. Uh, this part we didn't. We, we got up to here. The other class did, by the way. They were a little ahead of you. But they didn't talk as much as you did. They didn't have as many. And I'm, I'm not trying to say we shouldn't have done the talk. I'm just saying it got us a little behind. Okay, Olivia. Yes, we're going to, but I want to finish this first. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Guys, um, Square has four angles of 90 degrees, right? Everybody, you remember that? Yeah. You remember that square? A rectangle has four angles of 90 degrees also. But if it's a square and you draw a, a line through the diagonal, you get 245 degrees because it splits this 90 degree in half. So you get, you get an isosceles right triangle. This is a right angle, 90 degrees. And these, these are the same, so it's isosceles. So that means the base angles are the same, 45 degrees. And so you got a 45, 45, 90. That means there's 180 degrees in a triangle. In every single triangle, there are 180 degrees. You need to remember that. One side smaller. You mean the smaller angles? Oh, oh, they just tried to. You mean this little thing right here? Yeah, they just moved it so it wouldn't look like you were talking about the whole angle. They're trying to say this, these are the same, but it made it a little smaller. So go ahead, yeah, don't worry about that. That's all. Now, when you when you have two lines that intersect, uh, they, it makes two ang two angles right here and here that are called vertical angles. Vertical angles. One and three are vertical angles. Two and four are vertical angles. Um, they're they're right across from each other. You see what I'm talking about? It's like an X, and you got right across from each other. They're angles. They're called vertical angles, and they're equal to each other. They're always equal to each other. Another thing to be aware of is that when you've got two angles side by side, like one and two, when you add them together, you get 180 degrees because there's 180 degrees in a line. If you had a perpendicular here, there's 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. So all the way around, there's 180 degrees. Are you with me here? 180 degrees. So these two add up to 180 degrees. When they add up to 180 degrees, they're called supplementary. This is a word that you need to be familiar with. Supplementary, they add up to 180 degrees. Supplementary. So one and two are supplementary. Two and three are supplementary. See, they're on a line. They add up to 180 degrees. Three and four are supplementary. You see what I'm doing here? All of them that, that are on the same line, they're adjacent to each other, right next to each other. Adjacent means next to. They're called supplementary angles. They add up to 180. So keep that in mind. The vertical angles are equal. They're equal. But two adjacent angles add up to 180. So that's something you're learning about angles. It's a little bit of an introduction to geometry. Yes. On a straight line? It's always 180. Is that, I'm sorry, if you've got a straight line, it's always 180 degrees, you know, if you've got an angle here. Okay, it's always 180. So it doesn't matter, you know, here's an angle and here's another angle. They add up to 180. Uh, it, it can be, here's an angle and here's another angle. They add up to 180 if they're on a straight line. You make it, am I seeing it? Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. That's always 180. Just like there's always 180 degrees to try. Now, by the way, there's another word. 
two angles that add up to 90, if two angles add up to 90, they're, they're called complementary. And since they're 180 degrees to triangle, and this one's 90, if it's a right triangle, this, this happens to be a right triangle, these two have to add up to what? 90. You see it? Because the whole thing's got to be 180. So these two have to be 90. 90 and 90 makes 180. So these are said to be not supplementary, but complementary. You see the difference? Two words. Supplementary, add it to 180. Complementary, add it to 90. Got it? Now, you may have a problem like this one down here. There's a right triangle, and this is 50 degrees. You know these three angles have to add up to 180 altogether. These two have to add up to 90, but all three of them have to add up to 180. But you know these two have to add up to 90, so X has to be what? Everybody see it? Everybody see X has to be 40? That's got to be 40. Do you know what Z is? No. No. When I said you've got two lines that intersect, this angle and this angle are called vertical angles and they're equal. Nope. This angle and this angle are equal to each other. It's not 90. It's not 50. It's not 180. What's Z? Z. 40. You see it now? It's a vertical angle. You see? There's a line here and a line here. And these are vertical angles. So that's 40. You see it? Yeah. So guess what Y is going to be down here? No. Nope. Mm, think about it. How much? You got a straight line right here, right? There's 40 of it. 100. And, not 180. The whole thing's 180. This is 40 down here. What's Y? 140. Now, guys, you better look at this. You better look at this closely. <laughs> Remember, two angles that are next to each other on a straight line, they're, they add up to 180. They're supplementary. They add up to 180. X and Y add up to 180. Y and Z add up to 180. You see why? See, this is a straight line here. Y and Z make up that straight line. X and Y make up this straight line. So these two add up to 180. And these two add up to 180. Got it? X has to be 40 because 40 and 50 make 90. And there's got to be 180 degrees over here. This has got to be 40. This is a vertical angle straight across from it. So it's got to be 40. And Y has to be 140 because these two and these two all both have to add up to 180. Got it? All right. That's, that's a lot of good information about angles and triangles it needs to stay with you because you'll see it again and again one of these days you'll see it on the act here's a parallelogram uh, this is 40 degrees this is 60 degrees in a parallelogram opposite angles are equal so if this is 60 a has to be 60 okay now if that's 40 can you tell me what this angle is right here it's not 40 because this is not yeah, does everybody see why, where the 80 came from? These three have to add up to 180. It's a triangle. You see it? And we got 60 and 40. That's 100. So there's got to be an 80 here. Yeah. See it? Okay. Okay. Actually, this is 40 and this is 80. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the sides of a regular triangle are equal in length. Regular means all the three sides are equal. Now, that may not look like they're all equal. It looks to me like the bottom's shorter, but we'll pretend they're equal. So if all three of these sides are equal, that means all the angles have to be equal also. So what's one of those angles going to be? You see it? Yeah, you divide 180 by 3, and you get 60. 60, 60, and 60 add up to 180. Yeah. Um, do you know what angle ACB is here? ACB is this one right here. How much is it going to be? How many degrees are there in a... 
How many degrees are there in a corner of a rectangle? 90. So if this is 70, guess what this has to be? They got to add up to what? No, this is not a straight line. This they got to add up to 90. You see, this is a this is a right angle right here. So this is 20. See, those two have to add up to 90. You see it? Everybody see it? Got to add up to 90. This is a right angle right here. So we got 70 of it. So 20 more of it makes 90. And if this is 20 and this is 90, what's that going to be? Well, these two have to add up to 90 because this is a triangle. And it's a right triangle because there's 90 down here. So this has to be 70. Yeah. Okay. And of course, that'd be 20 back over here. Yeah. No. Okay. Very good. So you need to be able to think those things through and recognize those angles. Um, I'm not going to go there. Let's look at this one. Can you tell me what X is? Yes. It's 60. Does everybody see why it's 60? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. This is a triangle, so all of these added up together have to be 180. And you've already got 120 right here, so you need 60 more. So guess what Z is? Have I see it? It's the vertical angle. And guess what Y is? This is a straight, this is a straight thing. That's 180. So we got 60 of it here. This has to be 120. 120. Yep. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, now, let me give you a handout here. You're not done. Pass those around, please. Here you go. Give, give me the leftovers, please. Thank you. Just a second. I've got to get this thing to work again. Thank you. All right. Now, guys, we won't do all of these problems today, but I'll try to do samples of all of them, the ones, you know, to make sure you understand. And I'll be glad to do anything you ask me to do also. I will also do that next next Tuesday if I need to. Look at this one. Let's review here. 14 to 32 marbles were blue. The rest were red. What's the ratio of red to blue? What do you have to do first? Thank you. 32 minus 14. 14 were blue. 14 were blue. The rest were red, so I'm going to subtract, and I get 18, right? So 14 blue, 18 red. What's the ratio of red to blue? 18 to 14. Thank you. You can write it like that, and you can write it like this, and if you want to reduce the fraction, that's fine, but that's it. Got it? Red to blue. You got to think. Okay. All right. What are you going to do first here? Yeah, two times three is six and one is seven. Three times one is three and one is four. Two times four is eight and one is nine. Everybody see what I'm doing? I've, we've done this for a long time. I've changed the mixed number to improper fractions. Now, no, no, that's only when you add or subtract. That's good. That's a good question. Now, the next thing is, now listen, you could multiply straight across. Seven times four times nine. Two times three times four. You can multiply those. But there's an easier way, right? What? Cancel. Yeah. So this three cancels with a nine. 
and the four cancels with a four, and that's it, right? But but on the top it's seven times one times three, which is twenty-one. On the bottom is two times one times one, which is two, and that's the answer. You can leave it like that. You don't have to change it back to mixed. If you did, if they did ask you to change it back to mixed, you divide twenty-one by two and get ten, with one left over, and a half. All right, this time I would suggest you stack them when there's subtraction problems. And then you got to have a common denominator. So you got eight and five twelfths and three. It's got to be a twelve. Twelve is a common denominator. Eight. Yep, eight. That's right. Now I've got five's too small, so I got to borrow one from the eight and make it a seven and seventeen twelfths. This is five twelfths. I'm adding twelve twelfths to it. Twelve and five is seventeen. I'm subtracting 3 and 8 twelfths. 17 minus 8 is 9. 7 minus 3 is 4. That's correct. It's not quite reduced, of course. 3 goes into both of those, and you get 3 fourths. But this is fine. I wouldn't count that wrong, unless they tell you to reduce it. It's a good habit to reduce it, but I just don't feel good about counting it wrong. All right. Got it? All right. Let's look at the next one here real quickly. Um, what are you going to do first here? Yeah, yeah, you're going to do what's in parentheses first. So I've got two thirds. Is that a three? I don't think so. Two thirds divided by one half is the same as two thirds, tell me what to write, times two over one. Thank you. Multiply by the reciprocal. Now, nothing cancels, so I get four thirds. Are you with me? It can. That's right. Um, so yeah, okay, let's just, let's do that. One and one third. So you got five minus one and one third, which means you need to change this to four and three thirds minus one and one third, and you get three and two thirds. That's the answer. Let me, let me say something just in case some of you might be wondering. You, if you want to, when you're subtracting fractions, you can change them instead of Instead of mixed numbers, you can leave them in proper fractions. So this would be 5 over 1 minus uh, 4 thirds. And, and then you'd need a common denominator, which would be 15 over 3 minus 4 thirds, which is 11 over 3. It, it's the same as 2 and 3 and 2 thirds. So if you want to do it that way, you can. I'm not trying to confuse you. You don't have to. It's just an alternate way. Some of you might like that. You might rather change it to improper fractions. As you go on in math, you'll be doing more and more of this kind of thing and less and less of this kind of thing. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't have any fraction here, and I had a third. I need to subtract something. I need to subtract from something. So I took one of the one of these and made it into a four. And one is the same as three thirds. This is one. So four plus one is five. So I changed five to four and three thirds. See it? Yeah. And then I could subtract. But you might like to change them to improper fractions and do it that way. That's a good idea. Okay. All right. So we've got to multiply decimals. Uh, the test here is making sure you get the decimal in the right place at the end. Two times three is six. How many decimal places do I need? Two. There are two decimal places. One, two. So I needed 0 0.06. You with me? You with me, Bella? You with me? Now I got to multiply that by 0 0.4. Do you have to line up the decimals when you multiply? No. No. When you add, you do. So it's 24. But how many decimal places do I need? Yeah, 24. I, I got to have three. There's two up here and one here. So I got to make it 0 0.024. Clear? Good. 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 The key thing here is to count your decimal places and make sure you have that many down here. Okay. All right. Good job. Here's another division problem. What are you going to do first? 2 times 4 is 8 and 3 is 11 fourths divided by 2 times 4 is 8 and 1 is 9 halves, right? Did I make a mistake? Same thing as 11. Oh. Times. Two over nine. Yeah, you got to change the division to multiplication and, and multiply by the reciprocal. Yes, you can. So you got 11 on top and 18 on the bottom, right? 
All right, cool. Let's divide a decimal problem here. 1.4 divided by 8. Just put the decimal. Just divide like old-fashioned long division. Just put the decimal up there where it belongs. Yeah, it goes one time. One times 8 is 8. And now you can just ignore that decimal. So it's 6. And you can put a 0 here if you want to. And keep going. 8 goes into 60. You know how many times? Seven, that's right. Goodwill. Seven times eight is fifty six. Contract. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Very good. Just put as many zeros as you need up here. That's right. After the decimal, you can add as many zeros as you want. That's right. Okay. Got it? Now, at this point in time, does everybody, if you wanted to, I'm not saying you have to, but does everybody know how to find my videos of the classes? Well, if you don't know how, you need to talk to me because I've, I've sent that out sometimes or talk to somebody, but I'll, you know, or somebody could give you the link. But if you text me, I'll, I'll give you the link so you can find it. But you, it's valuable to watch those videos. And my number is 423-261-5562. And you can text me and ask for a link and I'll send it to you. But then you ought to keep it so I don't have to send it to you every time. But it's all on YouTube. All this is on YouTube. What we're doing right now will be on YouTube. All right, I'm so good at this. Now, let me tell you something. You don't have to diagram it, but you do have to answer it. So it, it's up to you. All right. Two thirds of 18 holes. Two thirds times 18. That's what that means. Does everybody understand that? Two thirds of means times. 18 and 3 goes into 18 6 times and 2 times 6 is 12 2 thirds of 18 is 12 you can of means times 2 thirds times 18 you can make a chart if you want to and I don't know that I want to take time with that right now but you can say thirds means I'm taking the chart into 3 parts and it's all got to add up to 18 and so each one has to be 6 and two-thirds would be 12. So you can do it that way, but I'd like for you to learn how to do it this way. So that's the answer to A. On how many holes did he not shoot for? It's just the rest of them, right? So it's 18 minus 12, which is six. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. It's a perimeter. Perimeter. Yeah, just add these three up and you'll get the perimeter. How do you find the area of a triangle? One half times the base times height. The area of a triangle is one half the base times height, which would be one half times 18 times what? 12. Yeah, there's, I mean, you've got a half of eight. The base is eight, 18. The height is 12. The height's not 12, 15. The height's 12. And you can multiply that. I'm not going to take time. That's right. You can take a half of. You can take half of 18, get 9, 9 times 12, or half of 12 is 6, and 6 times 18, whichever is easier. Okay, yep. 108 is the answer. But I'm not going to multiply all these out because of time. We're going to run out of time here. What do I do here to get the Y? You subtract so 1.7. You got, you got to add something 1.7 to get 4.2, so you subtract 1.7 from 4.2, and you'll get your Y. This one's a little more difficult. If it were me, I would multiply both sides by W and say 4.5 is 3 times W and then divide both sides by 3. But listen to me. If you get confused and you say, well, I know I've got to either divide or multiply and you divided and you multiply these two, you get a pretty big number, right? And, and if you're dividing 4.5 by a big number, you won't get 3. So, so you'd realize, uh oh, I better divide. You divide 4.5 by 3 and you get the answer. Yeah. Think about what makes sense. Think about what makes sense. You got to have a common denominator here. You know what it is? No, seven. Four won't go into six. Yeah, they both, they all go into 12, don't they? So this becomes 10 twelfths, right? Two times six is 12, two times five is 10. 
This becomes one and how many twelves? One, two, three, four. four. I multiplied four by three to get twelve. So I've got to multiply the three by three and you get nine. And then I've got two and how many twelves? Yeah, two times six is twelve, so six times one is six. And you just add them up. Ten and nine done is nineteen and six more is twenty-five. You get three. Now you you could divide twenty five by twelve and you get two with one left over, right? So it's five and one twelve. You add that two back over here. Twenty five divided by twelve is two with one twelfth left over. You put that two with a three, five and one twelve. I might take one point off because we almost we, we should never leave an improper fraction in a mixed number. You, 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 but I wouldn't count more than a point off. I might count a point off. That's a, yes, sir. Yes, you may. Five and one twelve. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And then this last one, it's you got to have a common denominator. Three and nine twentieths minus one and five twelfths. Uh, that's a harder problem because of the. the how many denominators bigger? But if you go up to 40, 12 won't work. And if you go up to 60, 12 will work. This is a harder problem. Maybe there won't be one like this, but that would be three and something over 60 minus one and something over 60. 20 goes into 60 three times. Three times nine is 27. 12 goes into 65 times. Five times five is 25. At least you don't have to borrow this time. 27 minus 27 is two over 60. Three minus one is two. That could reduce to one thirtieth, but I would certainly count that correct, even though it's not reduced. A lot of math teachers will not do that, but I think if you've done the problem correctly, it's not really about reducing, even though you need to keep in mind some math teachers will make you reduce them. You need to be able to reduce it. Okay. I'm not going to do that one. We've already done several of those. The ratio of soldiers to civilians. Three to seven. What fraction of the people at the outpost were soldiers? Now be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. There are two kinds of people at the outpost, soldiers and civilians. The ratio of soldiers to civilians is three to seven. But the question says, what fraction of the people were soldiers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So soldiers were three to seven. So three of soldiers, seven civilians out of a total of 10. So it's three tenths. Yeah. Yeah, this is tricky because you got to think they're talking about everybody on this one. When they say the people, they're talking about soldiers and civilians both. Yep. You got to add them up. All right. You're doing good. Christina ran a mile in five minutes and 52 seconds. How many seconds did it take Christina to run a mile? Yeah, if you forget, you can ask me how many seconds are in a minute, but everybody knows it's 60, right? So five times 60, very good. 300 plus the 52, 252 seconds. Got it? Clear? Yeah, five minutes is the same as five times 60, 300 seconds. You add the 52 to it. Okay, good. What do you do here? Yeah. You're going to subtract this from 6.7 and you'll get the answer. Now, test yourselves, guys, because I realize how confusing this can be. And some of you may think, well, I'll better add these. But if you do, you'll get a number that's too big. You won't, you won't add 4.3 and get 6.7, right? So think about what you're doing. Check yourself. And if you add them, you say, whoa, 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 that won't work. I better subtract. Yeah. 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 There you go. When you're subtracting, yeah, you almost always in this kind of problem, you're going to put the big number on top and subtract the small number. Do we need to do this one? We've done several of these, haven't we? For time's sake, let's go on. I mean, you know, to change that to an improper fraction, you know how to divide, multiply by the reciprocal. You've done that several times now. You know how to divide decimals. We did one of those a while ago. Uh, about how many milliliters of liquid are in this container? And I will tell you. Oh, you can't see the liquid, can you? Is this it right here? Okay. Uh, yeah, this would be a guess, sort of. But this is 100 and this is 200. So 
So this is probably 150. You see what I'm saying? It's halfway up. So it's probably 125. Everybody see it? Okay. Yeah. You got to look at the, you got to look at this one and this one, 100 and 200 and say, well, that's, that's in the middle. So that's 150. And that's in the middle of that. So it's 125, one fourth of the way up. Um, the amount of liquid in this container is how much less than a liter. Again, I would tell you how many milliliters there are in a liter. Do you happen to know how many milliliters in a liter? Milli. Think of milli. How many milliliters in a liter? A thousand. It's a thousand milli. But I'll tell you that if you get confused, if they ask you one like that on the test. So you're going to subtract if it's at how much less than a liter. Well, it's 125 milliliters. And you, and you got to subtract that from a thousand. So yeah, it'd be, it'd be 900, I mean, it'd be 875, right? Yep, not 85, 75. You borrow one here, change this to a nine, 990, 10. 10 minus five is five, nine minus two is seven, nine minus one is eight, 87. And you can check that by adding these and see if they add up to a thousand. 875, very good. Very good, very good. Um. Oh, I've got a suggested, better try a millimeter to centimeter problem. If you had uh, 25 millimeters, you know how many centimeters that would be? Now, let me tell you something. You, you got to know how many millimeters in a centimeter. And if you forgot, I will tell you, but does anybody know? No, it's 10. There are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. That's one of the reasons I'm willing to tell you, because this can get really too many conversion factors to learn, and I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about you being able to do the problem. So if they're 10, so, so 10, look at this, 10 millimeters in one centimeter. Are you with me? That's one. Or one centimeter in 10 millimeters. You can write either way. You can flip it. So if you're changing 25 millimeters to centimeters, what do I want to cancel? I want the millimeters to cancel. That's got to be down here, and it's going to change it to centimeters. So I want the centimeters on top. That means this, one centimeter and 10 millimeters. So I'm going to divide this by 10 to get 2.5 centimeters. Some of you may be able to say, wait a minute. If there's, if there's 2.5, if there's 25 millimeters, and I got to change it to centimeters. Centimeters are bigger, so there's going to be fewer of them. You see my link, my thought there? Centimeters are bigger than millimeters, so there are going to be fewer of them. So I must divide by 10, not multiply by 10. If I said change 25 centimeters to millimeters, well, I can use the same conversion factor, except this time I want centimeters to cancel, so I'm going to put it on the bottom, so it'll be like this one, 10 millimeters on top. And now I'm going to multiply. That's 250. And again, some of you might say, wait a minute, if I'm changing 25 centimeters to millimeters, millimeters are going to be more of them because it's a smaller unit. So there's got to be more of them, so I better multiply by 10 and get 250. That's good thinking. I'll give you the 10. If they don't give it to you on the test, I will. If you don't see it, ask me. You, see what I'm saying? Ask, you can ask me for conversion factors like that. Okay. And then you just have to decide, do I divide or multiply? And think about what makes sense. If it's a smaller unit, there's going to be more of them. Notice the TH here, 175 thousandths. That look right? Three places, right? This is tenths, this is hundreds, this is thousands. Oh, I did something wrong. Did you want to pick it up? Yep. Yeah. I skipped the word in. 100 and the answer to the decimal, 75 thousandths would look like that. You clear? You, you clear? Do you see what I messed up? I, I didn't notice the word and. Look at the next one, 175 thousandths. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 175. So that and tells me where to put the decimal. 100 and. Yep. yep, yep. Very tricky. If you don't notice the words, you got to read it carefully. Is it a proportion? 
You remember what I said to do to solve a proportion? Cross multiply. Do you remember what I said you might want to try to do before you cross multiply, Bella? Bella, 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 you with me? Pay attention here. What? And I'm talking about Bella. Uh, yeah, I would really strongly recommend you reduce. Do you have to reduce? No, but it's a messier problem if you forget to reduce. Because you have to multiply four times 21 and then divide it by 14. So, so I would reduce this because seven goes into both of these. It's three over two equals n over four. Now you can cross multiply. Two times n is two n. Three times four is 12. And so n must be six. Just divide 12 by two and you get six. Yeah, it's much easier if you reduce it, if it can be reduced. All right. Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. This is a plus sign, so you're going to either add or subtract. Subtract. Yeah, if you if you're you're thinking of something to add to this to get that, so you better subtract that minus this, right? Four seven five minus four three six, and you'll get him. So I'll you know four seven five minus four three six. Just be just subtract it again. If you get something really weird, go you know, check it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you know if you forget and add, check it, and it won't work. Try it, and then you say, well, I better subtract. We've done plenty of these. We've done plenty of these. Ran four laps in six minutes and 20 seconds. How many seconds did it take him to run four laps? Well, the first thing you did, we did one of those a while ago. Yeah, six times, six times 60 is 360, and add 20 to it is 380. His average time for running each lap was how many seconds? And three. Yeah, 4 to 380, right? 380 divided by 4. That's to find the average. You add the, the total is 380 divided by the number of laps, 4. And that's 9 and 5. Very good. 95. Okay. Mm -hmm. 24 miles per gallon of gas. At that rate, how far could the travel car travel on a full tank of 18 gallons? So the, yeah, 24 miles per each for each gallon for one gallon. It's 24 miles. So for 18 gallons, you'd have to multiply both those by 18. And 18 times 24. I'm not going to multiply it out right now. You know how to multiply, but that would be the answer. Multiply it out. Well, thought you did. Did I check him on that? Maybe. Take his word for it. Okay. It's not reasonable. Okay. OB is 30 millimeters. I would label this if it were me. It doesn't look like a three. I don't make very good threes, do I? AB is 30 millimeters. CD is 45 millimeters. AD is 100 millimeters. Find BC. So you add those together, you get 75. You subtract it from 100, you get 25, right? And then you can say, all right, does that make sense? 30 and 25 is 55, and 45 is 100. Yeah, makes sense. 45. Yep, check yourself. But I would label problems like this because it makes it easier to visualize if you label it and see what you're looking for. What decimal number names the point mark B on this number line? Do you remember what I told you to do here? When you see point seven, what did I tell you to do? Put a zero here. Zero point seven six. So this is 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, point seven six. There you go. If you don't put a zero here, that'll be very confusing. But if you put zeros there and think of this is 70 and this is 80, you can see it. Can't you? Yeah. 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 Good. And the measure, well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, another cost multiply. What would you do first? Reduce this to Fifth. four fifths, yeah, and then just do it like a cost multiply. You've done done that already. We'll run out of time. This you change the improper fractions. You can do that, can't you? And if you can cancel, cancel, yeah. You know how to do that. Change this to seven over one. Change that to improper. Flip it, multiply. But after we 
right? Yes, yes, yes. Let's do this one. This, this is seven over one divided by five times six is 30 and five is 35, right? Over six. So do that first, change them to improper fractions, and then flip the second one, leave the first one alone, change the multiplication, and this will cancel. Seven goes to 35 one time, you get six fifths. Yep. All clear? All clear? Am I good? Okay, good. Good, good, good. And this one, you know, we've done several of those too. Let me do this one just. Nah, we're out of time. Let's stop there. Listen, guys, you got a handout to work on. This test is Tuesday. If, if, if you are working on that handout and you don't understand it, let me tell you what your options are. You can talk to a parent if they know what they're doing. Some of your parents say, I don't have a clue how to do that. Well, talk to somebody else. Talk to a friend. Call a friend. Guys, listen, you can text me and send me a picture of the problem. Just take a picture of your camera or get your parents to do that and send it to me. Say, how do you do this problem, Mr. Hall? And I'll tell you on the, on the text how to do it. Or you can wait to get here on Tuesday, not right before the test. You can say, so how do you do this problem right here? And I'll say, I'll show you. You agree with me? Don't sit around and be ignorant about something. Figure it out. But you got to put the energy, the muscles from your brain to get this stuff learned, right? It's, it's not easy. I know it's not easy. You got to make yourself work at it. So you got your job cut out for you on Tuesday. Okay? Can you turn in assignments late? Yes, you can. Do I recommend it? No. But you can. Can you retake tests? Yes, you can. Do I recommend it? Yes. Depends on how low your grade is. Yeah. If you made a 98, I would not recommend it. But if you but if you made a 40, I would recommend it. Okay. Anything else before I let you go? All right. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the kids and the way they have focused today and learned this stuff. Pray it help them to the ones that are still confused to use this handout to get ready for the test. And I pray that when Tuesday comes, they will do well. Bless us this weekend. Help us to glorify you. Help us to walk with you. Help us to remember you're with us all the time. And help us to be disciplined and hard workers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Stay in the battle.